homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. I am making a meatloaf. It's part of the pantry challenge, but mostly it is because it is the third week in January and it's overcast and cold and I want comfort food. And so this is kind of classic comfort food. I am trying out Instead of adding breadcrumbs to a meatloaf, I'm gonna try adding oatmeal. I ran across something a little while ago where people were talking about, what's your favorite back of the box uh, product recipe that you've been making forever and that you won't apologize for, which I thought was a great fun prompt. Several people in that list said the recipe for meatloaf that was on the back of the Quaker Oats container. I've made a lot of meatloafs over the years. It's not a regular staple. We don't eat it like every month, but I make a couple of meatloafs a year. And many, many years ago, before I was married, I made a meatloaf, probably one of the first meatloafs I ever made. And it was the best meatloaf I've ever made. And of course, I was in my 20s and I didn't write anything down. And I have no idea what I did to make that meatloaf so great. And so I've been chasing it for the past 20 years, trying to duplicate it. Maybe that meatloaf that I made that was so much my favorite, maybe I was looking at the Quaker Oats box. You can find the Quaker Oats recipe online pretty easily, but there's also a, not a whole lot to it. And so while it might be awesome, I, I can't get quite that simple. And so I'm using that recipe. I'm also using a recipe from America's Test Kitchen for their um, glazed meatloaf loaf that's really popular. And then I just looked online and so I'm also just using recipes that I found online that sounded interesting. Um, one of which had a spice mix for a meatloaf that I thought was an interesting idea. So I mixed that up. So I'm going to throw that in there. So, you know, it's never going to be duplicated again, just like the other one, but we're going to give it a try. So what I have here is a pound of ground pork and a pound of ground beef. And then I have a small onion and about a half a cup of bell pepper. And I've chopped these in the food processor mostly because I really wanted them to be chopped quite fine. I'm not gonna cook these ahead of time. They're just gonna cook within the meatloaf. And I really didn't want big chunks of onion that didn't get fully cooked. And so that was kind of my motivation for that. To this, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of rolled oats. I'm also going to add in two eggs. I'm kind of splitting a few differences here because the original Quaker recipe was for a pound and a half and the Cook's Illustrated recipe is for two pounds. And so I'm just mixing and matching here as I go. The other thing that makes the Quaker oat recipe unique is that it uses tomato juice or tomato sauce in the meat itself and quite a good amount of it, a cup. I'm not gonna go quite that far, but what I am gonna do is I have, this is homemade tomato paste. I have a recipe for this on my blog. I will post a link to it. It's actually originally from Hank Shaw. So I think what I'm gonna do here is just, this stuff is really thick. And so I'm gonna mix it with half a cup of water. And this water isn't boiling, but it is warm. Adding a full cup just seems like a lot of liquid. Seems like too much to me. Yeah, the Cook's Illustrated recipe uses what's called a panade. A panade is breadcrumbs or bread and milk put together to make a sauce. It's a great way to make meatballs. And essentially meatloaf is just one giant meatball. And so that's kind of where that's coming from, but they only call for a third of dairy with that panade. So a cup of liquid just seems like way too much. I am going to add in my seasonings here. And this is quite a bit. This is two teaspoons paprika, two teaspoons ground mustard, a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, and black pepper and basil, dried basil a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of thyme. Honestly, that does not seem like enough salt to me, so I am gonna probably, I'm gonna add another, at least another half a teaspoon of kosher salt, because that is two pounds of meat, that's quite a bit. 
All right, and we are just gonna get in here with our hands. This meat is probably still just slightly frozen in the middle. Not too bad. Break that ice up. And there's gonna be quite a bit more fat in this pork. The, the beef is quite lean, but the pork is not. My hands are quite clean, by the way. And this was pork from a pig. We bought a half a pig in 2021. We did not buy one last year. And then the beef is from last year from a local cow. The fact that it's really cold is probably a good thing because this is a lot like making sausage. One of the things with sausage is you really want to keep your meat super cold so that you can get some marriage of meat fibers doing their thing and spices and herbs, but not get what's called schmear, which is when the fat in the meat starts to melt from all the handling. And Hank Shaw, who I love and who I follow many of his recipes, says that when you're making sausage, your temperature is right when your fingers are starting to ache. And that's actually kind of how this feels right now. This is really cold. So maybe this will bode well. Maybe this will make really good meatloaf. Will it be the match for the one I made when I was probably 23? Yeah, we'll see. All right, I feel like that's enough. My hands are freezing. Whew, wow, is that cold. Right, this gets another thing dirty, but I have a dishwasher, so it's an easy thing to clean. This is a great trick for shaping, which is basically you use your loaf pan like it's a mold, and then you just that seal, there we go. And I can smooth out the edges of that just a little bit. But it's a nice way to give yourself a loaf shape pretty easily. All right, I do need to make a glaze for this. And I am just gonna follow the Cook's Illustrated recipe on the glaze, although not necessarily their method of applying it. I need a cup of ketchup, and this is homemade ketchup, and honestly, this is half the reason for this recipe, is I made this ketchup, let's see, what year? 2019, it's been a while. This is homemade ketchup, and I didn't love it. And I knew when I was making it that I probably should have rethought the recipe, and I didn't, and I ended up with a ridiculous amount of ketchup that I didn't love. Um, the issue with it was it has too much clove in it. And so I really don't like it just as a condiment, but it does make a really great glaze on meatloaf. And so that's been the primary use for it. I need a cup of ketchup. I think you guys have seen me talk about this ketchup in another recipe. I can't remember which one it was I used it in that I was talking about it. To this, we're gonna add, calls for a quarter cup of brown sugar. Seems like a little much to me, so I'm probably gonna cut that down just a bit. Two and a half tablespoons of vinegar, cider vinegar. I'm actually using up some homemade vinegar. So two and a half tablespoons of vinegar. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball that half tablespoon and a half a teaspoon of hot sauce, which seems rather tame. I'm just gonna eyeball that too. And this is the ongoing homemade cayenne Frank's hot sauce that I made that I'm slowly using up. That's probably more like a teaspoon. I'm gonna give all of that a bit of a whisk. That hot sauce imparted a nice smoky flavor. So I'm gonna put just a small coating of this glaze on here now. And then we're gonna do the rest of it like a half an hour into the cook. Because if we put all of this on here now with the amount of sugar that's in it, it's probably just gonna kind of burn. So we're just gonna seal this bad boy up a little bit. And I'm just kind of winging it. I, Alton Brown also has recipes for um, meatloaf and I've made his before and I can't remember right at the moment like when people typically glaze, but I'm just gonna do some now and some later. 
Let's get this into our 350 degree oven. We're gonna give it about a half an hour, come back, put the rest of the glaze on, and then give it another 15 minutes to another half an hour, depending on how it temps. So it's been a half an hour. It smells amazing. Just out of curiosity, let's take a temp. Ultimately, we're looking for 160. Guessing right now it's going to be really low still. Oh yeah. We're very, very cold, so this is probably definitely going to take an hour to cook. So we're only at 45 degrees. Very slow. I'm just going to coat this with some more glaze. And I think I'll save some of this for that last couple minutes. But right now we're just going to do this. We'll just kind of let that drip off as it warms up. Back in the oven it goes. Mm. This works better if I am in Fahrenheit and not Celsius. There we go. That makes more sense. All right, 160 is about where we want to be. I put it in for another 15 minutes, so it's been in a total of an hour at this point. Yeah, I think we're there. I'm going to throw the rest of this glaze on here. Maybe I'll just mash the glaze that's currently on here around. Yeah, I don't think we need any more. I think we're good. We've got it as a dipping sauce if we want it. I'm going to let this rest for uh, 10 minutes or so while I make us a salad and then we'll have dinner ready to go. All right, this has been cooling probably about 10 minutes. balsamic vinaigrette on our salad. This is lettuce that has been growing in my windowsill. It's been really fun to grow lettuce this year during the winter months. This is kind of a first time for me. So we're having a nice salad. We've got some beautiful meatloaf. It's really good, you guys. It's well seasoned. That seasoning mix was good. The glaze is beautiful. It's super tender. It's not dense. It's got a nice softness to it where it kind of breaks apart in your mouth. Yeah, really yummy. This might be a winner. So there you have it, Tribe. Pantry challenge meatloaf with pork and beef and some lovely winter salad from the windowsill. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I make new content every week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.